Peace and blessings. This is Jock Kim from the Hard Talk with Jock Kim show. Can't get enough of the Hard Talk with Jock Kim show? You can email us at btom6164 at gmail.com. That's b t h o m p 6164 at gmail.com. Peace. We'll be right back with a hard talk with Jack Hill. All right, peace and blessings, y'all out there. Uh, listen, I wanted to get into this really quick today. That's why we have a quick, small introduction today because we got one of our good friends on here. Um, listen. Before we get started, you know we, you know, I usually talk about politics and we usually talk about civics and what they don't do for us. But today we're going to talk about fantasy. We're going to talk about comic books. We're going to talk about The Little Mermaid. We're going to talk about all the stuff that you wanted to talk about with a fantastic guest. But before we do that, we want to give a shout out to a young lady here in Wilmington, Delaware. That's right. You know I broadcast from Newcastle and Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, she was a good community leader and actually a good person. I actually liked her. I didn't agree on all of her policies, but who does? But she was a damn good person for the community. And she died today uh, unexpectedly uh, this morning. It was heartbreaking for me to hear this this morning. And that's for uh, counts, former councilwoman Rashima Dixon. Yes, it's, it's always heartbreaking with some of our young people our young people die so unexpectedly. And uh, I want to give a, a, a warm and tender prayer to her family and friends. Uh, there is a vigil here in Wilmington. It's supposed to be starting at 730. Uh, my wife is going to represent us there because I'm going to be here and I'm probably going to get there a little bit later for it. But I'll keep you posted on the details. But without further ado, I want to bring in my man, comic book extraordinaire entrepreneur, my man, Demetrius, the motion Bullock. And yo, if you haven't seen the daddy long legs and, and uh, his son's uh, beautiful, word, comic yeah. books, which I have, if you haven't got, you need to copy. Demetrius, come on in here, brother. Welcome to hey, the heart. What's going on, brother? Dad? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, uh, former Councilwoman Rashima, Rashima Dixon. Yeah, going too soon. Going way too soon. Wow. Powerful, and yeah. It was a shock for us this morning, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw that, I was like, wow. You know, it, you know, we always go to bed with visions of what we're going to do the next day, the next week, the next year. But you, you never know when your time is your time. Man. But yeah, uh, they, rest they, in peace. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace for it. Yes, we yeah. were. I was just at another event right in uh, Wilmington. In fact, we ran over here real quick uh, with Dr. Ben, uh, Sandra Ben's organization at the Wilmington Police Department. And they gave a, a nice little, uh, she gave a nice little thing for her there as well. Uh, one thing that you always say, if, if most people either love you or they hate you. And if somebody can say, you know what? I respected her. That's the biggest love that I that you ever can get. That's right. That's right. Again, uh, you could say you respect her, you know, because at least she was she was uh, truthful in her walk. You know what you saw is what you got. Um, and uh, and and you, again, I agree with you. If you didn't believe in everything, or, or didn't you know uh, believe in her policies. You know, you could respect her. So again, rest in peace. She was 30, 35, I believe. 35? Yes, yes, 30. Uh, oh, at that yeah. young, I heard that she was, I knew she was a lot younger than me. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah well, but I, I, I tell too. you this, I, I just I just had a good conversation with her in June at, at a, uh, a prom party going out for somebody, and we just had a conversation. But mm -hmm. you know how that is. But you know, yep. we have to keep on moving on. And keep, keep pushing on on. so that we make sure that these lives that are out here, that we not another generation has to go through what we're going through today. Now, yeah. my man Demetrius Bullock will tell you right now 
that in the comic book band, and not only do he do comic books, he is a phenomenal artist. I, I wish we had some Thank of your you, stuff. T tell me where we can actually look at some of your artwork, other than Instagram, because I see it on Instagram as well. Right. I got some of my stuff on my website. Um, a lot of the current um, art pieces that I created, uh, which were showcased over at Zali's in Old Newcastle, um, I haven't put up there as of yet. But uh, you can go to my website at uh, Motion Illustrations with a Z at the end of uh, illustrations.com. Motion Illustrations.com. Yeah. With a Z. Yes. With a Z at the end instead of an S. <laughs> oh, Motion listen, Illustrations. Man. Yeah. I have seen some of your pieces. I have bought some of your, your I bought your comic book. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, I am fascinated, and, and, and I, I like to draw as well. I am yeah. always fascinated when you come up with these ideas and put them on canvas. And we all know that putting stuff on canvas ain't cheap. It's not. It's not. When you put it on canvas, it's not cheap. <laughs> I, I so say, having, yeah, go ahead. I say, I tell people that uh, I, I have another artist that was here a couple of years ago that I have his work in my living room. Right. And I, when I, 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 I spent about five fifty for it. And, okay. and when I first spent, and this was about 20 years ago, when I spent five fifty, my mama looked at me like I was lost my mind. <laughs> my mama right. looked at me. And then I explained to her, I like the piece. I like yep. what he did. I like how he framed it. I like... So you pay for that. Right, right. And, and, and a lot of people go, don't understand that. Even to go further, it's just you pay for all of the hours, you know, that artist stayed up perfecting the craft, you know, timeless hours of just, you know, being able to present, you know, what you currently have on your wall. So, you know, and, and again, it, it appreciates all of the artwork, depending on how the person is moving, the popularity of it, what may have won awards, you know, um, the, the prints, how many prints have been sold. Yeah, you, you know, you may have a valuable piece on your hands. 500 right. for an art piece. I don't know how big it is, um, but, uh, you know, 500 in today's world for an original piece, that's a steal. Yes, it is. That's yeah. that's my point. And that's yeah. the point that I was trying to get to. That is yeah. my point. It is a steal. Not yeah. only that, you, you, you have a piece of someone's vision. Yeah, and I say that it was we we also say that whether we be a musicians or whether I'm doing my DJ stuff, you're not just paying for the hours; you're paying for the hours that that got me to this point. That's you, right. In other words, you, this is not just the ink and the uh, paper, but it's a whole bunch of years of crafting, and that's, that's right. important. That goes that's for important. singers, that goes for actors, that goes for everyone, mm -hmm. every artist that that. You know, you pay this top dollar to go see comedians. There was hours and hours and hours of, of cultivating this gift in order for it to be at the level that it is. You know, you go see somebody, even if it's for an hour or two hours, and you're paying maybe $150, $200. I know I paid $300 to see an artist perform. You know, so that's for all of the time it took to get to this point. And right. you know they're they're performing it in with a professional level. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And you know, uh, as an artist, one of the things that I've always noticed, and about your artwork, mm -hmm. your artwork always has, to me, has a hip hop flavor to it. Now mm -hmm. I know we all, me and you, grew up in the hip hop era, and and we were from we we grew up way back in the beginning. So we know a lot about hip hop. Uh, the other day I was playing, I was playing one of my speakers and I was just testing it out. And I had um, a song, one of my neighbors, and I had uh, What Your Man Got To Do With Me by Boston K. And the neighbor almost lost his mind. He couldn't no more be 31 years old, but he said, oh, that was my jam back in the day. And I was like, he, he didn't think I would have something like that. I guess he must have thought I was going to only have Temptations and C.C. Right, Wine in right. my select collection. Well, we grew right. up in that era. Absolutely. That's a that's a good era. That was a and, good era. That was the era of creativity. I say early 70s up until, you know, um, I say the the late 90s, uh, early 90s. Yeah, late 90s. Early 90s. Early it was 2000s, a different era. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, different era than what we, you know, not to knock anybody. There's a lane for everything. 
Um, and these these uh, artists today are, are creating that lane and, and uh, being very profitable in it and putting out some, some of the music I like. But uh, our era was something different. There was that originality. You can tell the difference between this artist and this artist. You knew this was Rock Cam. You knew that was LL. You knew that was Red Man. You know, um, you could go back further. Treacherous Three, Grandmaster Flash. Grandmaster Flash, your cousin, Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, yeah, it's my cousin. So I, sure. a lot of the earlier ones I got a chance to see, you know, because of my cousin. And I got to see the beginnings of a lot of, you know, was currently this multi-billion dollar industry. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, I got to see a lot of the artists, too, because at the time I was actually in uh, two different bands and I used to hang out with this other band called Future and I actually had a recording deal. So I actually have uh, uh, pictures of us at the Apollo on the Apollo yeah. stage. And I used to do a lot of MCs and all that. I did so much stuff, man. Forget about it. I, I was right. They, they thought I was Jamaican or West Indian because I had so many jobs. I said, uh, they're nice. not the only ones that got a lot of jobs. I got jobs too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> two, three jobs, man. Yeah, yeah. Two, three jobs, man. Yes. Shout yeah. out to Living Color. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Living Color. Oh, my God. So, yeah. like I said earlier, your art has, I can feel that hip hop flavor in some mm -hmm. of your work, especially in the comic books. I can feel that hip hop flavor. And right. um, I, I'm sure you was, I don't know if you was tagging trains back in the days, but what you doing? <laughs> well, um, that's, that's where <laughs> I tried my hand at it. Um, I, I knew a, a few um, tag artists who are, whose works are considered, you know, famous now. They're, they're in, they've been to museums and everything. But I, back in the day, I tried my hand at it. I used to call myself Kid Motion, you know, that was my tag name. And I and I I got invited to go and try to bomb a train. That's what they used to call it, bombing the yes, train. Bombing. And I had a I had such a hard time in trying to get to the tunnel and getting inside and everything. I tried it one time and I, I never returned back. Wasn't my that's thing. Right. But I, I much respect to them because that's where um I, I fell in love with just the 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 flow of artistry because I, I my window was right outside the number two and the five train in the bronx and oh, okay. whenever I, yeah i was on I the was, other side of the two and five train in east new york new locks okay. Avenue, oh, you know, so. that way <laughs> nice nice well when that train would go by my window i would run to the window and i would look to see what the latest tag was on the train and 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 some uh, graffiti artists, I mean, they told such a, a vivid story through colors and and imagine, uh, imagery, so I, um, imagery that I, I I just had to adapt to it. And uh, and growing up, I, I used to, you know, try to emulate what I saw, and and uh, and then it was comic books and everything. And I wanted to create, you know, once I found my my niche and my style, I wanted to create it, but with a flair, type of hip hop flair, something that I, you know, you would identify with yes. my work when you see it so well yeah, uh, so it I love your work. thank you if, if anybody that's oh we got a couple of comments anybody who's who's ever done your work oh they got my cousin vanessa my cousin vanessa and, hey, and vanessa. my cousin carl are watching big shout okay. out to them give them a shout out they all new yorkers shout out carl and vanessa thank you for tuning in thank you so much that's right i'm honored I, to be on the show yeah and they'll tell you back in the day when the DJ and I'm doing all my pop locking and all that other stuff. And then, of course, <laughs> later on, when I got into uh, corrections and then got into security, we used to see a lot of those people at Webster Hall or Central Fly or Cheetah. I used to see so many hip hop artists come through, whether it be Curtis Blow or Grandmaster Flash or even Funk Flex. Uh, whether I was doing security up at uh, Sue's Rendezvous in Mount Vernon. One of the things that I see in your art that I love a lot is that you have a very big, broad palette for color. And yeah. and if you, I love color in stuff because it brings it brings the variety. Talk mm. a little bit about the color. Uh, well, I, yeah, that I, I, I perfected that, I like to think. I just love, I love color. I love vibrancy in my work. Um, I know how much, you know, color can excite the emotions within us, you know, and I try to be, you know, very careful on how I combine my colors in order to make the, the, the image draw you in. Uh, Cause you can mix up some colors and you can repel 
your your viewers, but I, I make sure to, to to draw you in, and then you pay attention to the detail and every other thing. But color's real big with me. I love vibrancy. Well, you know what? That that's great because we're going to get to a, a, a the thing about vibrancy right now. We mm -hmm. talked about the hip hop. We talked mm -hmm. about the influence, and I think when I came to your comic book uh, convention that you had a couple of months ago, uh, I have bought you a um, one of my signed prints. Uh, comic books there, and I brought a spawn there that was signed by uh, Todd McFarlane. One of the things that I have found, not only in your work, not only in your work that's a comic book, but in the canvas, is that you really put a lot of diversity in your characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not the cookie cutter Marvel DC. They're a mm -hmm. little bit more in depth uh, in my in my opinion, than a lot of the other ones. Can you explain why why you put so much into it? Ah, uh, just I, I want to draw you in again. I love. Um, I think in, in bringing up McFarlane, I think he allowed us to, you know, break the traditional style of comic book creating and anatomy drawing all together. He had taken a, a iconic character, Spider Man, and he went beyond just a traditional when it came to uh, illustrating. Um, that was probably one of the comic books that I really, really paid attention to. I mean, comic books got me interested in, in learning and, and was my teacher in learning how to draw the body. But when he went outside the spectrum and created Spider-Man with this, like these, like the legs is cocked up to his yes. ears and the arms was extended out. And it was also right. Crazy. The famous one where he has like a spread and, yeah. and Spider-Man is on the, uh, on the webs. That mm -hmm. one was, oh my God. I've seen it that in incredible. black and white and it was fantastic. Right. Even when he shot the web, it wasn't just the web, it wasn't just the web itself. It was like the web, and then it had a webbing wrapping around the other web. And it was, it was just, it was bananas. And I, what it got me to understand was that, you know, when it comes down to this art, there are no rules. And in order to gain an audience that can identify you, just go outside of the, the box. You got to get outside of the norm. So I do that when I, I mean, I can draw, um, I can draw characters that look exactly like, you know, the, the subject that I'm creating. And then there are others where I may extend the anatomy. I may draw a little bit, I may do a little bit more extending it, adding, um, you know, colors, maybe a robotic uh, piece to the imagery. Definitely. Um, put a little flair in there. The comp one of the greatest compliments I got, especially when it comes down to how I create my characters and you know my nickname, which is Motion, and my art. Um, they say it's like my paintings. They consider my paintings just a, it's a it's a poetry emotion. It flows, it moves. They look at my work. They say, "Yo, it looks like it moves." And then they see my name. They say, "Motion." No one. <laughs> You're absolutely right, man. The one I yeah. saw that you did for Zollies. The here mm -hmm. in Newcastle. Okay, Newcastle, Delaware, an old Newcastle. Mm -hmm. They have a restaurant there. I think they do Louisiana cuisine. The one that he has at Zali's is one of the best examples of your work that looks like motion. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Chef Tony. Uh, I love oh, yeah, this Chef food and restaurant. Absolutely. Absolutely. He had he had asked me, could I create a, a look for um, his uh, bistro restaurant? that he has in old Newcastle. Um, and actually it was when I first created the logo, I believe he was at the celebrations on Market Street. That is correct. over there by the riverfront, right? And he asked me, could I create something uh, with a style? And, uh, you know, his, his grand, he, he, um, he thanks his grandmother. He says his grandmother had a lot of, you know, inspiration in the food and, and everything that he does. She taught him, you know, certain recipes and things. So he wanted to incorporate her image within the logo and uh, for the times that I have gone to, you know, celebrations and the the, the vibe and the feel, because at that time it was a, it was a bar setting and it had the food, right. and it was a little bit of party and it would be jazz and it would, you never knew what you what you were gonna get when you went in there. I love that about it. So I definitely wanted to incorporate creating the title, but using creating the title out of instruments, but with right. his grandmother sitting on top holding the food and everything. So the Zollies is like horn and you know, that creates the word and everything else is kind of like some type of brass instrument that creates the word Zollies, but it flows, it flows. Yeah. So and when you look at it, you know, it gives, it gives it life. It definitely has flowetry. Now uh, to all of my viewers out there and to the ones that's going to be viewing this on YouTube later on, mm -hmm. 
Uh, we're going to be right back. We're talking to Demetrius Motion Bullock, and we're going to be right back. We're going to talk about Little Mermaid. We're going to Ooh. talk about 007 Bond being a black or 007 being a black woman and right. the bigotry that we're seeing now. We'll be right back with the hard talk with Jack Kim. We'll be right, right. back, y'all. Check this out. Self-made is a myth. You hear it all the time. Quit playing the victim. Look at me. No one ever gave me anything. My family wasn't rich. We pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps and made something of ourselves. Quit looking for handouts and work for it like everyone else. Now, most of us who've managed to eke out a living in this world who weren't born with a silver spoon in our mouths do understand the value of hard work and perseverance. But most people who claim to hate the idea of entitlements, subsidies, welfare programs, social services, and the dreaded reparations often fail to acknowledge the advantages that they themselves were born with. Not to mention the many ways that segregation, gerrymandering, redlining, housing discrimination, and discriminatory hiring practices have affected communities of color and their descendants for generations. But because when I get on a plane, I don't expect the airline to tell me they have a few bad apples on the flight crew. Or when I go to the emergency room, I don't expect the doctors to tell me there's a few bad apples working in the emergency room that day. And so the citizens of Pennsylvania do not expect from their law enforcement to have a few bad apples serving their communities. All right, y'all. Listen, I had to play Sister Dara Tucker on there first because she was talking about that self-made thing, uh, the myth of self-made. And big shout out to Dara Tucker. I always like to listen to her on Patreon. If you see her, you, you check her out. If you don't know, Dara can sing a butt off. And plus, she has some fantastic videos, whether you watch them on TikTok. And the last one, uh, Representative Donna Bullock down there in, in Pennsylvania, up there in Pennsylvania. Uh, I always love playing that piece. That's one of her fav my favorite pieces of her. She's absolutely right. I don't expect to have a few bad apples. I don't care about that. Let me, we, we're talking to, again, uh, artist extraordinaire in my book and entrepreneur, my man, Demetrius Motion Bullock, and we we left off about his work. Now, if you saw the first piece, we talked about uh, his work. Now we're going to talk about some other works out there. Uh, basically, we're going to talk about the bigotry that has been expounded. I'm, I'm going to talk about it more next week on a couple of other stuff, but there has been over one million negative uh, connotation and comments about the Little Mermaid um, preview that was put out from people who said a mermaid cannot be black. Now, it's fantasy. I don't understand how y'all still racist on the fantasy, but because I see this bigotry, that it's got to be something more than what we think it is. Now, uh, Brother Bullock, I'm going to ask you, whether it be uh, elves in the power <laughs> ring or or the little mermaid or even something as insidious as there cannot be black people with cornrows in the house of the dragon. Right, right. Is it, this bigotry stuff really that bad? Because it seems like we, we moving backwards. Yeah, yeah. It is that bad. And again, you know, what you said is right. It's fantasy. So the characters can be whoever they want to be. You know, um, even uh, Superman, he's getting ready to be black. And that was an uproar. Oh, they're going to kill it with that. Yeah, yeah. So You wait till um, they find out that the people who invented Superman were Jewish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, but, you know, the story, there's... The story of mermaids, from what I understand, the mermaids were actually black when they were first created. They were well, actually. Well, my brother, let me just say this. As many of us on mm -hmm. this horrific transatlantic that was thrown overboard, mm -hmm. it would make the sense that if you if, if there were some that survived that might have been through the tr the, the enslavement mm -hmm. of black folks in the new America and in Africa. Uh, it, it's just, it is now beyond the pale. I have seen, I have seen John Wayne play Genghis Khan in a stupid yeah. movie from the fifties. 
and mm-hmm. they put the stupid thing on there and Cleopatra being played by Elizabeth Taylor. But it's hard mm-hmm. for you to believe there's a black mermaid. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the mermaid can be, you know, whoever, <laughs> whatever you want it to be. Um, it's and Spanish. I, I think, and I'm looking forward to seeing this young lady play uh, uh, the black mermaid, the little mermaid. I'm excited. You know, and it's good to see more. It's it's more. We need more um, diversity in all of these, you know, fantasy roles and characters. Because for a time, I mean, you know, me growing up, I didn't have it. I didn't see it. Or me. Uh, you know, we didn't have anything. I didn't. I didn't think that we created anything. We had anything. We were involved in anything as far as you know, superheroes, fantasies, everything that I saw. It it, it had it had none of us. You know, so I said, well, maybe we don't we don't exist in those worlds. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when I say you you know when I say fantasy, I'm talking about sci-fi as as well. Right. And uh, one of the things that we we talked about Todd McFarlane, mm-hmm. one of the things and which uh, comic books golden age wasn't just 1945. The mm-hmm. other golden age was 1991 when Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane and all of them branched out of Marvel. And with mm-hmm. the image and creating, even even to the guy who couldn't do feet, Rob Layfield, I'm going to give him some, <laughs> something too. Uh, yes, <laughs> the reason why Todd McFarlane's spawn became so popular because it was a black man with black issues. It mm-hmm. wasn't a one-off that Marvel was doing for maybe some of the things for Black Panther or uh, something that Falcon did or even with some of the black characters in DC. And uh, this diversity thing now, and like you, I wasn't going to see The Little Mermaid. I already know it. And hell, the crab is Jamaican. Why wouldn't the black, the the crab has a Jamaican accent. Why wouldn't the mermaid be black? It's just not, it's it's almost like me watching The Lion King. Right. And right. you go watch the you watch the cartoon first, and then mm-hmm. you go to Broadway and see that the cast of The Lion King is almost entirely of people of color. I right. like to say black folk, but a, right. a, a people of color. And then get said, why is there so many black people here? It's in Africa. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I went to go see that that Lion King bringing up that on Broadway, and at the time that when I went to go see it, it was all black cast. They were yes. they were honest with it now. It, it's I heard that it evolved over time, and you know, and they kind of filled in the the void. And again, and again, all you're doing you're putting on a performance. If there are some whites and white people in there, Caucasians, I'm fine with we it. We have Just no problem the, with that. Good, good, good performance, you right. know. But when it's the other way around, um, of course, there becomes a, a big issue. Um, and the Game of Thrones. Um, What's the other show that that's currently out? They have the uh, the uh, new, the power got, of the power rings. The power of the rings. Yeah, I just yeah. started watching With that. The water the rings. See. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. It was the same way. It was the same way when uh, there was a problem when the uh, Star Trek, and we're going to talk about sci-fi as well. When mm-hmm. Discovery came out, uh, mm-hmm. there was a little backlash in that, and Gene Roddenberry had already mm-hmm. discussed this in the '60s that his universe had no racial issues with humanity, right. had none. And right. he made it clear, and yet the people who are fans, it's, I, I'm gonna say this, and I'm going to try to be very understanding here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of wrestling. I'm a big fan of sci-fi. I'm a big fan of UFC. I'm a big fan of boxing and, and other combat sports. Mm-hmm. It's the same group of people that you will find that are racially, uh, who watch a lot of those things that have that racial bigotry. I'm yeah. sorry to say that, but it is the truth. It is the truth. We would not have a Joe Rogan doing all of that stuff last year, saying all the N word like that, if it wasn't so acceptable for those people in the combat sport. So it seems to be that there's the same group, and I can guarantee you. A lot of the people who talked about the the Little Mermaid are big fans of the NFL. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There's, there's something there's there's something there, you know <laughs> that uh, that in their mind, if it's not 
white folks in one way or black folks in a particular corridor. They want to keep you in that corridor that it ain't right. Sci-fi doesn't work that. And I'm glad that a lot of these uh, businesses are now saying, you know what? It's enough to stop that. We we got to stop it now. And let's That's diversify. Right. Let's open it up. That's right. I mean, growing up uh, uh, and and it's in to show you, you know, just how important it is to see a representation of us within these realms uh, as a child growing up. First time I saw a black cartoon of any sort was the Fat Albert Kids. Yes. You know, that's when I got to see us uh, animated, got to see the Fat Albert Kids. And then I got to then watching Scooby Doo. One day they had Jackson Five on there. I was like, oh, shoot. You know, um, then. Uh, I was a big tra uh, fan of, uh, you know, sci-fi. I used to watch uh, 1199. I watched, uh, what was the other one? Um, Star Trek. Oh, and on definitely. there, you know, shout out to uh, Nichelle Nichols. God rest her soul. You God know, rest her um, soul. Yeah. But yeah, it, she, was a, I mean, it, it was the same the way. With elegance. And I'm sure back in that time, they probably, they, there are no black people in space. <laughs> you <know>? Again, again <laughs> dark melanin would yeah. be the natural cause. If right. you know, it, it would have been the natural course. But again, these people are so caught up in their bigotry, mm -hmm. so caught up in the education that they've been taught that was wrong, totally right. wrong, totally right. off the hinges. Doesn't matter if there was a black president in the White House. Doesn't matter if the first lady was black. That's they right. are so caught up in their bigotry that they lose their minds. Now, I have watched two talk shows to, um, you know, podcasts of people and uh, trying to explain this stuff away. And their reasoning makes no sense. Mm. Mm. I, all, all I'm going to yeah. say there is with their reasoning, it just makes no sense. Again, thank you. We, we, we have some more people that that's loving what we we're doing. They put up. Thank you again. Um, the what's what we're going to bring to is now go back and bring it here to a Delaware issue. Now, if you live in Pennsylvania, if you live in New Jersey, Georgia, big shout out to all of our people that watch me in Louisiana. We're going to oh. talk to you all about what's going on. I got a big following in Louisiana, especially on YouTube. Right. We're right. going to talk about some of the things that's going on there. But I want to talk about another thing that's in the sci-fi realm and um, the fantasy realm that doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, I want to talk about um, a guy that I liked that another one that died too soon was um, Millennium Comic Books. Millennium Comic Books that was around with uh, Dwayne McDuffie mm -hmm. and all of these people that were around in the early 90s that were trying to change the course of comic books when they left to go to Image, or that they created their own ones. That Millennium was an offshoot of DC uh, comic books, and now they're bringing it back. Uh, Icon, which was very big, popular. He was kind of like a Superman, but he mm -hmm. had a sidekick. Uh, mm -hmm. Rocket was her name. Uh, yeah. One of the things that Dwayne McDuffie and the and the rest of the gentlemen that was there, I'm I'm not because he he created Hardware, which was a great comic book. I mm -hmm. have that one as well. Um, they were trying this out in 1994, 1995, and 1996, and, and the early 90s. What happened is we took a step back, and we got to stop taking, in the black community, step backwards. Mm -hmm. How do we have such great music in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s, and then we went to crap again? We've got to step back. And in sci-fi, I, I think we need to do something there and i'm glad independent people like you are doing your own comic books what do you think about the funding for those types of projects well we definitely need more funding in that area um you know my family and i we just did a uh we did an um we went to go uh, meet the people at the penguin publishing up in new york and there's definitely a need for diversity and it, they've even expressed it because right now, you know, they have the Caucasian market. And uh, aside from Caucasian books, the next up is uh, books that are created by, um, that's created with animals. But they haven't tapped into, you know, the African-American market. And being an independent creator, you know, like ourselves, and 
we are able to create those. And now we have the publishing companies, you know, coming for us. It's definitely a need. The funding needs to be there because the market, the market is 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 asking for it. It's it's, it's definitely looking to have more of us on the screen. So, you know, right now, I know at the time they didn't want to put any money into our stuff because they felt that it wasn't going to bring in the box office dollars. You know, we've proven time and time again that that's that's untrue. You know, you know, I would like to see more of us in um, because we you know, we do the street roles. We do the comedies. We do the the real life uh, biopics. But I would love to see more of us be able to expand with our creativity. I know that just as there are comic creators like myself and my son and and so many other independent artists, there are comic uh, there are uh, fantasy directors. There are those that that deal with animation that can create a fantasy world. Those are you know that can create um, something that has more that's created by Black people um, that's living in the you know in the in uh, in space. You know, I would love to see more. That the dollars have to go into that. Give us one of those big box office budgets, hundred million dollars to create a film, and you'll be surprised at what you see. I I, I agree with you, man, and yeah. and. Uh, yeah. Most of the people that I see that have uh, black comic books or people of color comic books are mm -hmm. self-funded. There, mm -hmm. it seems that they have to do a lot of self-funding, but mm -hmm. I don't see them actually going to the community to say, "Listen, I need y'all to invest in this, and I give you this X Y Z," because that would be also, you know, I'm I'm big into it's economics. I'm big into mm -hmm. economics. I think that a lot of us that do this type of work and you in particular that do that type of work, we need to really open up to the community and say, listen, you can get a little bit of this because, you know, we're on our next third, we, we're getting ready to get out of here, but we're actually going to have one more break. We want to talk about digital, uh, doing stuff on digitals, and we want to talk about NFTs. We want to mm -hmm. talk about... Are, is is this the next way for us, for black uh, illustrators and artists to get better funding and to get their stuff out there? So hold on there. Hold on, Demetrius. I'll be right back. with okay. This is the Hard Talk with Jack Kim. Listen, we got a great guest. Demetrius, come right back to us, man, and we'll be right back. Listen All to right. this thing from uh, Sister Nina Simone. I'll tell you what freedom is to me. No fear. I mean, really, no fear. If I if I could have that half of my life, no fear. Lots of children have no fear. I wasn't gonna say nothing, but I'm tired of folk giving dumb advice on this app. I'm about to help somebody today. I think the most foolish thing that I've seen lately is a woman who don't ask for nothing deserve the world. No, she don't. No, she don't. She deserve exactly what she asking for, and that's nothing. She gonna get exactly what she been asking for, and that's nothing. Cause ain't nobody out here got time to be reading your mind. Ain't nobody got time to be reading your mind. You ain't asking for nothing. You ain't gonna get nothing. Cause in the word it say you have not because you would ask not. And on the street it say a closed mouth don't get fed. You better open up your mouth today. You better open up your mouth today. I encourage you to start opening up your mouth on today and start asking. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need a little something for my inconvenience. If I'm keeping your kids, I'm gonna need $50. If you want me to take you somewhere, I'm gonna need some gas money. Start opening up your mouth today because y'all open up everything else. You open up your house, you open up your legs, but you won't tell somebody that you in need. You have not because you asked, and I start asking. All right, y'all, listen, that was Sister Black. Y'all know her from there. She's doing great comedy, but she's got a point in for us black folks. We need to open up our mouths when it comes to funding our black enterprises. If you want a black owned business that is run black and you want to open up your mouth, tell the, co tell the community, listen, y'all got to start supporting us. And we're going to give you, we're going to get back to the community because they're going to see what we have to bring them up. Kanye right. West just recently, that's right. Kanye West just, just went through a billion dollar deal with the gap. I don't buy Kanye West clothes, but he was selling one of his one of his uh, sweat joints for four hundred dollars, for thirty. I'm all right with that. The Gap 
didn't want him to do all this stuff. And Kanye backed out of a billion dollar deal. He said it today on the thing. He said, listen, how are you going to bring a leader into your company and then you don't want the leader to leave? Mm. I, I'm yeah. going to tell you, you got to open up your mouth. You want these companies, you want black owned businesses, you want black characters, you want stuff. Y'all got to start opening up your mouth. And open up your mouth to me means opening up your wallet to artists. That's Stop trying to nickel and dimes. Well, let me be the first. I'm, I'm, I'm opening up my mouth. <laughs> we need some funding <laughs> to bring these comic books to life. So anybody <laughs> interested in helping out Daddy Long Legs and the Inchworm, let's get it going because I can see it moving on television. This idea was actually created by my son when he was nine years old. He came up Bryce, with this idea. is that right? Bryce, yeah, yeah. Uh, he came up with the idea, and as an illustrator, painter, you know, I said, son, let's do it. He drew up the comic He, you know, on loose leaf paper. Um, he gave it to me. He said, Daddy, what you think? And here we are, five issues later. <laughs> you there know, you go. Published. I love Published. it. Yeah. And, and let them know where you can actually see more of your artwork and to purchase your artwork. Okay. Well, we're on, uh, again, my website is uh, Motion Illustrations. Uh, you know, illustrations, it's spelled, but with a Z at the end instead of an S. And uh, the comic book, um, Daddy Long Legs and the Inchworm, is available on Amazon. Dot com. Just oh, look at Daddy easy. Long Legs and the Inchworm. That's easy. All right. Yeah. So listen, I, uh, before the break, I did say we're going to talk about a little bit of NFTs. I'm a big fan of NFTs. I actually uh, have some investments in Bitcoin already. I already got some. Not a okay. lot. So don't okay. y'all don't call me up and tell me about because I'm looking for long term. I'm not looking for short term. So I leave it whatever I got to do. What, do, you, do you think NFTs will help uh, black artists and, and artists of color? Well, it's no different than any other social media, that, you know, you know, having the opportunity to just uh, view in from a different uh, location. I, at a time, I didn't understand the concept behind it because you're, you're paying for something that you don't physically hold. It's just a virtual buy. Um, but I've done my research on it and, uh, you know, I see it's the, it's the next wave. It's It's the next big thing. Uh, there are a few people that become very profitable behind it, you know, artists, wives. Um, there's a lot of celebrities that's making a lot of money on it, but it, it's all in, you know, what you buy in. I think it's something about you have to buy into this, uh, um, Ethereum. Link, yes, you Ethereum. Buy some yes, right. Ethereum in order that's to be able to, okay, sell the pieces. Um, um, I've been, I've had quite a few people that reached out to me and want to <laughs> manage some of my work and put it on the NFT, you know, but um, I, I can manage my own stuff, but I, I've done the research. I'm still doing the research on it, you know, to see where and how I would be able to, you know, profit because I have a series that I, I would be interested in putting on there, but I want to make sure it's the right one. But like everything else, um, when it's groundbreaking, when it's, when it's fresh, when it's on the bottom, you know, there's an opportunity, there's an opportunity. So, you know, I, I, I you know, I think it's a it's a good venue. It's a good venture. You know, going I, you know, set. You know, one of the things that I I found out about it, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm going to give him his props. Nineteen Keys was uh, really uh, pushing it on Instagram, okay. and and um, when I saw him with his hats and with his, his stars and his his particular look and logo, I said, "There's something here." Now, we all know the metaverse is coming. We can't stop it. It's the way it's going to be. And right. whether, you're, whether you're on a platform like this, Facebook, or uh, something like Fanbase, where you can get a little bit more for subscribers, um, it's, you, you would be remissed and left behind if you did not get into it. I'm telling you, it's... Mm -hmm. it's you know, um, there's so many people, even Gary V, uh, that say that this is the way, this is the future. It's, it's coming. I can right. see every day that Facebook is changing something or Instagram is tweeting. So some at some point in time, you're going to have to get on a platform. And as an artist, you're going to have to find another way to sell, to get that, to, to get profit off of your artists. Artistry. Absolutely, absolutely. If nothing else, this pandemic has showed us we have to be, uh, we have to expand in, in our creativity and how others get the chance to see it, view it, and be part of it. 
buy it. Yeah. And this couldn't have come at a better time, I guess. You know, yes. NFTs. You know, again, as an artist who's who used to doing gallery shows, viewings, you know, different uh, pop ups, you know, uh, being able to just put my stuff. And I've sold quite a few pieces from just posting it online and, you know, virtual uh, auctions, so on and so forth. But being able to put my stuff up there that somebody buys and now I can never show it again or I can never use it again. I'm like, OK, well. I, I still I'm trying to understand how this whole thing works. And there's so many platforms from when it first started now, just like, okay, well, which one is the right one? But <laughs> you I, know I what I'm gonna there's, do there's, there's an opportunity for it. Uh-huh. Yeah, what I'm gonna do in the next coming weeks, I'm gonna have a, a brother here who's gonna explain uh a fantastic brother. Uh he's gonna explain it. He bit he he um he's actually in his early 40s, but he's been in that realm. And mm-hmm. he explains a lot of stuff. And he actually show tell you what you it's like anything else. I, I can tell you the Kodak story. And I, I, we got a couple of minutes. I'm going to tell you the Kodak story real quick. Uh, okay. When Kodak was big and was out there and they damn near had the market lion's share of the market uh, for photography cameras, the guy, there was a guy in there that actually created a digital camera. And he went and brought it to the C-suite, which is the CFOs, the CIOs, you know, all the CEOs. He brought oh, it to them and said, listen, this is a digital camera. We can make money off of this digital. I just created it. Kodak, you can have it. Well, the Kodak, the CFO and CEO of Kodak said, you know, uh, that's not what we do. What we do, we make money off of film, we make money off of the paper, we make money off of developing. We've already got this market share. We don't need this digital camera. Mm. 20 years later, Kodak is damn near dead because they did not see the innovation that was coming next. Digital Mm. cameras. Kodak had a chance to have it, did not see it. It's just one of many stories of Fortune 500 companies that missed the mark. Black mm. folks, you can't miss this mark. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, we, we can't miss this mark. Too many of us think that all we need to do is buy jewelry, cars, and and not own anything and just mm-hmm. flash. Now, right. I do want to, before we get out of here, I know you spent a lot of time in Los Angeles and I've been out to Los Angeles. Most of my time is in Las Vegas. If you don't know, I'm a big poker player. I, okay. I play in a lot of tournaments. Um, uh, we, you've been out to Los Angeles many times and you've been out there, uh, rest in peace, uh, PNB. Yeah. Uh, my, 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 my take on this is real quick. This is where it lands for me. If you're watching this and you're a young person and you want to get into the entertainment business and you think that having a lot of jewelry in places that you're not supposed to have all that. Mm-hmm. And posting where you're at, do me a favor. Take, please, after Pop Smoke, y'all have got to pay attention. I'm not blaming the victim. No. Whoever did it, they're 100% responsible. Hopefully we'll find out who did it and won't be one of these Tupac or Biggie things. But right. you know Los Angeles, brother. Yeah, yeah, I tell you, yeah, it's a different a different culture out there. Um you know, you got a lot of artists that said, please, you, you, you can't, you know, out here with the jewelry, it's really a no-no in a lot of areas. I, I've seen it, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm well aware of it. And besides, uh, 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 jewelry is, I mean, that's just a, for some that go out there and they, you know, expend themselves by buying all this jewelry and stuff. Th- that's just a way of trying to fill, I feel, to fill a void something acceptance to show so this is your status and everything but some of the richest people you never know you would never that's know. right don't wear it yeah yeah you don't wear it as far and, and they're not flashing you know, yeah yeah and god rest you know that, um, rest in peace to, to pmb but you know again i think he posted where he was and what he was doing at the time when he was actually and his girl there. posted yes i don't when i post a picture it's been days since i've been there <laughs> you know yes uh, i posted when i'm gone Right. Unless I'm doing an event, sometimes I'll post live, you know, just to say, come on out and have a good time. We're having a, you know, it's an event, but I'm not, I'm not a flashy guy, nor am I one that boasts or anything like that. I, I just go on, post, you know, my, my content, my art, you know, um, my content, 
if I'm at an event, come on out and enjoy yourself. That's what it's about. But yeah. And, and that's what it should be about. I, you know, Ice T had a, a post and people were killing him on black Twitter, but then he, he put the other post on it. He's absolutely right. He said, man, let me, and both of us being from New York city, we know this very well. Mm -hmm. Every time you try to test the streets, somebody yep. gonna get hurt. Everybody, somebody gonna get hurt. Somebody's gonna get hurt. There's a hood everywhere, and in that hood, we all we all know there's rules. Can you hear my dog? Yeah, I can hear your dog, but it's cool. Let me see if I can shut this door. There's a yeah, there's a hood and everywhere, and. And in those hoods, you know, I mean, of course, you want to have nice things, you want to wear nice things and stuff. But I mean, come on, we got to use our head. Now he's in there. <laughs> Listen, in the hood, in the hood, you just there's just certain there's just certain things you just don't do. It's like uh, the baddest the baddest man could get taken. So, and, and yes, so anyway. I, and I remember it in Brooklyn. They was gonna go after Shaquille O'Neal one time at this club called the Lab. And they yeah. was going after uh, I'm a, my, I can't remember his name right now. A uh, prime time. Prime time was on Fulton Street in in Brooklyn, and the, mm -hmm. the guys were going. Listen, I know they're wrong for doing that, but mm -hmm. let me tell you, and I'm gonna tell you like Ice T said it, and he's 100 percent right. Every time you test the hood. Somebody gonna catch a fade. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna leave real. it at that. And because we grew up in the hip hop culture, that's the reason why I brought that particular thing up. Listen, my fellow, we are ran out of time. And wow, man, we, brother, we're gonna have to do this one again because we've got so many other things to talk about. We get that's some true. good responses here. Uh, listen, you have been talking to this is the Hard Talk with Jack Cam show, and you've been talking to my man Demetrius Motion Bullock, artist extraordinaire. Go check out his work. He's going to give it to you one more time. And remember, we always say you got to do it in threes for people to remember. Give it gotcha. to them one more time where they can get this stuff. That's uh, go to my website at www.motionillustrations with a Z at the end of illustrations.com. All right, and listen, yeah. you also could check them out. And, and listen, don't act like y'all can't follow people on Instagram right. that they got to be people of clout. And you, if you're a clout chaser, I don't want you following me anyway. I don't want you keep your stupid uh, at, at home. But <laughs> if you want real content, if you want real people doing real things, because I'm gonna I'm a say, like Kevin Samuels used to say, you got to get in the field. Where the work is real. Where the work is so, real. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna keep mm. it real. Like you can check out Demetrius. What's your what's your ad, what are you at on uh Instagram? What's your name on this? It, it's my name. It's my name. It's you know, it's kind of long, but it's Demetrius D-E-M-I-T-R-I-U-S underscore motion M-O-T-I-O-N underscore Bullock B-U-L-L-O-C-K. That's my Instagram. It'll connect all you right. to everything on all my social media handles. Right, you know you can always get me at the real Jock Kim, whether it be on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok. You can get me at the real talk Jock Kim or follow me mm -hmm. on the Hard Talk with Jock Kim Show on Facebook. Listen, it's been a pleasure. We're going to have this on our YouTube channel, which is Delaware Info Now. We're going to have this within 24 hours. It's been a pleasure talking to our brother Demetrius Emotion Bullock. Oh. We would like to tell you again that we've got two more shows next week, and I'm going to keep you posted on it. But before I leave, we're going to talk. We're going to see this one more time about Sesame Place. Now, peace and uh, blessings, family. Peace and blessings, Demetrius. Y'all have a good one. You too, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you.